Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to be reviewing and ranking six different skin tints from best to worst. Today's video is a follow-up to the collaboration that Tamara at Tamara's Timeless Beauty and I did a few weeks ago ranking 10 different tinted moisturizers for our mature dry skin. I'm going to link those videos down below. When you're done watching this video, go check those out. The first question that comes to mind when we think skin tint is how is that different from the other two very popular complexion products, foundations and tinted moisturizers? It's really the first question I had when I was looking at these products. How do they differ from the more traditional complexion products? So I wanted to dig a little deeper and see if there was an actual definition out there for the difference between these three types of very popular complexion products. I looked in a few different magazines, did a little bit of researching online, and I've come up with a very short, brief description of each of these types of products. So a skin tint, the texture is thin like a serum, it's kind of runny, but it has an added sheer tint that gives a bit of radiance. It's less greasy than a tinted moisturizer, and it's best for dry or sensitive skin because of the light coverage, it's very easy to blend with a beauty blender. Tinted moisturizer. It's a moisturizer that has colored tint. So it's moisturizing first. That's the purpose of the product. Your skin can be seen through the coverage and it creates a veil. It's best to work in with fingers so that it melts into the skin. The most coverage, of course, that we're probably most familiar with is a foundation. A foundation has more coverage and a higher amount of pigment in the formulation. It gives you a bit more done or polished finish type look, and it's best applied with a soft brush. And as an aside, a BB cream is short for blurring. So if you wanted something to kind of blur your pores, you might choose a BB cream. And a CC cream is actually for color correcting. So there are color correcting pigments in a CC cream that you might not find in either a skin tint, a tinted moisturizer, a foundation, or a BB cream. All right, now that we have our definition set, let's review the six skin tints that I chose for you today for my mature dry skin. I'm gonna give you my favorite at the end. The one that I'm wearing right now is my favorite. We're gonna review drugstore to high end and everything in between. As I review each of these six skin tints, I'm gonna share with you their ratings, what the company says about the product, their costs, the texture, the consistency, the wear, do they last throughout the day, and do they settle into our mature fine lines. The first product I wanted to share with you is the Jane Iredell. This is her Hydro Pro Tinted Serum with Hyaluronic Acid and CoQ10. This is an extremely unusual texture. It gets a star rating at Ulta of 4.2, and at the Derm store, 4.4. The cost is high end at $58 an ounce. It has eight shades and my shade is fair. Let's see what the company says about this product. It says it provides an intensive hydration, even skin tone gives sheer coverage. It has hyaluronic acid, olive squalane, and it gives moisture retention to the skin it diminishes the appearance of pores, fine lines, and wrinkles with a dewy finish with encapsulated liposomes containing mineral pigments. It has an airless pump that maintains product's integrity and allows to dispense completely. A few of the call-out ingredients are hyaluronic acid, CoQ10, which is an antioxidant, shea butter and aloe, which are soothing, willow bark extract, which is slightly astringent. And I wanted to note that it does have alcohol DNAT as its fifth ingredient. So if you have sensitivity to that, that's good to know. It dries down very quickly. Let's talk about the wear time. After six to eight hours, it's a little dry on my skin. By the end of the day, I'm not moisturized. The creasing is minimal. I don't see any settling in my fine lines or the creasing around my nasal labial folds. I did have some buildup along my temple area, but I think I have some dry skin going on there, so I need to do a little bit of an exfoliation. The time and the wear off wasn't bad. I would say it's typical. It wore off in my chin area, kind of the high points of my face, the high points of my cheeks, my nose, and my chin. 
Trini London's BFF Distress Tinted Serum is a product that I've reviewed before. It gets a 4.4 on the Trini London site and a 4.5 on Amazon. The cost is $54 an ounce. Let's see what the company says. They say the hyaluronic acid smooths and plumps, leaving your skin well radiant and well rested. They have a unique scientifically proven complex called Triox, which combines five times the average active concentration of neurofroline, which allows the skin to de-stress. This is a compound that's supposed to act on topical cortisol. I think the research is somewhat limited, but it's kind of interesting and it's a unique feature for this product. The triple broad spectrum antioxidant complex boosts skin's antioxidant balance, neutralizes cortisol and stimulates collagen production to defend and protect the skin from daily life stressors. I will note that it does have a bit of fragrance, which isn't my preference, but it's not strong once it dries down and it doesn't seem to linger throughout the day. The call out ingredients are of course, its signature neurofroline, which is supposed to help topical cortisol production. It also has a complex of the five antioxidants, in addition to a couple brightening ingredients, the ascorbyl tetraisopalmitate and the honokyol. It comes in 12 shades, which are highly pigmented for a tinted serum, so they're quite flexible. My shade is Jemima for neutral vanilla fair skin. As far as texture, it's creamy, similar to a tinted moisturizer. It can be sheared out with either fingertips or a beauty blender. It is definitely not a serum-like texture that you might expect from a typical skin tint. By the end of the day, there's no detectable creasing in my fine lines. It wore pretty well, and I was expecting this because of the high level of pigmentation. It definitely doesn't wear like your typical sheer skin tint. You get a little more wear time out of this product than you would a typical skin tint. Glossier's Perfecting Skin Tint has a star rating of 4.8 at Sephora. It's a fairly runny serum-like texture. The cost is $26 an ounce. Let's see what Glossier has to say about their skin tint. They say it's an undetectable wash of color that evens out skin tone. The appearance won't hide your freckles or cake up your pores or cover you up. The ultra thin breathable formula leaves you with a smooth dewy finish that lets your skin shine through. It minimizes the appearance of pores while glycerin acts as a moisturizer to attract hydration. And I would agree with all of those. I love the way it goes on. It's a very light and sheer texture. It comes in 12 shades and my shade was G12. The consistency is what you would expect from a skin tint. It's got that serum like texture because of the high glycerin content. It's nicely spreadable. You can shear it out. And if you let it dry down a little bit, you can build the coverage in between layers. You're not going to get a full coverage, but you get that sort of veil coverage that they talk about a skin tint having. I think this is a beautiful product for normal to oily skin. The reason is at the end of the day, it did dry down a little more matte than I expected. I didn't get quite the hydration that I wanted out of it and it did settle in my lines just ever so slightly. The Morphe 2 Hint Hint Skin Tint is a wonderful serum-like texture. This is a drugstore skin tint. It costs $18 an ounce. The rating on Target is a 4.4 with over 2,000 reviews. The company says this lasts for up to 16 hours, is water and sweat resistant transfer resistant, it hydrates for up to 12 hours, it seals in moisture, nourishes the skin. They recommend starting with one to two drops as you build coverage. I started with four drops. 
They also recommend if you want a more substantial coverage to use a synthetic brush, but you can use a sponge or your fingertips for that more veil-like appearance. And it's buildable, nourishing, lightweight, and a hide and peak concealer. Once again, we see glycerin featured high on the ingredient deck with multiple different types of dimethicone and silicones for spreadability. No real skin loving ingredients in this particular formula. The wear time was fantastic. It definitely lived up to the company's claims of having longevity over the day. The settling in my fine lines was minimal to none. The wear off was minimal. I could easily wear it for six to eight hours and still look like I had some coverage. The Westman Atelier Complexion Dewdrops have been getting a lot of buzz lately. The star rating on Credo is 4.2 and on Sephora 4.1. The cost is a very luxury $68 an ounce. Let's see what the company says about this product. This has the strength of a serum and the beauty of a skin tint with light to medium coverage. Some of the call out ingredients are ginseng extract for brightening, sunflower and almond oil for soothing and moisturizing, urban shield complex, I'm not sure what that is, but it's supposed to protect against pollution and blue light. It also has pomegranate extract, which is an antioxidant to neutralize free radicals, as well as tiskubakai oil. And I'm not sure I'm pronouncing that right, so forgive me, which is supposed to firm and hydrate and retexturize. The ginger root complex calms and soothes instantly and over time. So those are the call out ingredients. It comes in 20 shades. And you can see that probably the shade that I chose is a bit too light. My shade was Atelier N, which is for porcelain and neutral undertones. I probably should have picked something with a little bit more of a yellow undertone in it. So my bad on that. I did do the online shade match, so I should have sent it back and asked for another shade. So that was my bad because it was quite pricey. The texture is again what you would expect a serum-like texture, and I would say this is fairly pigmented, definitely more pigmented than the Glossier or the Morphe 2. At the end of the day, I didn't see any creasing. It did not settle into my fine lines or crow's feet. The time and the wear off was dewy at the end of the day. It didn't wear off all that significantly, but it did have just those typical places, the high points where it wore just a little bit. But I would say the wear time is pretty good. Another super popular serum that's been around for a while now is the Ilia Super Serum Skin Tint SPF 40. This is the only skin tint that I reviewed that has sunscreen in it. I just don't think you can get enough of this product on to really count as a sunscreen, so I always wear an additional sunscreen. The cost is $48 for one fluid ounce, so I would say that's in the medium price range. The texture is as expected serum-like texture with lots of flexibility. There are a wide range of shades in this skin tint. There are about 28 shades. My shade was Rendezvous. I think it looks beautiful on the skin. It leaves a sheer coverage with skin peeking through. The wear time on the Ilia was fairly good. My skin still felt moisturized at the end of the day. It did wear off, of course, in the high points, and settled a little bit into my pores, but no significant creasing. I would say this is an extremely comfortable skin tint to wear. You get the coverage that you need, it's buildable, and it still leaves mature dry skin radiant by the end of the day. Now for ranking them from one to six, I'm gonna start off with my least favorite and move to my most favorite. A couple of these were a tie. My least favorite actually was the Jane Iredell. This just didn't give me enough moisture and enough coverage throughout the day. I think if you had oily skin, you would love this skin tint. My second least favorite is the Trini London Skin Tint. The reason is this really doesn't act like a skin tint. You don't get that veiled effect that you want with the skin poking through. It's fairly heavy coverage. And of course it has the fragrance, which really isn't my preference. 
and I just felt like it really didn't live up to the name of a skin tint. Next is the Westman Atelier. I just felt like this was a little bit too greasy for my mature skin. I wasn't really all that fond of the texture. It wore fairly well, but there just didn't seem for the price to be anything special about this formula. Next up in the middle of the pack is the Ilia Skin Tint. I actually really enjoyed this skin tint. It left my skin dewy by the end of the day, gave me a little bit more coverage than I would have expected, but you can still see my skin poking through. Definitely on the top three is the Glossier. Really enjoyed this. I like the fact that it gives just a better than me skin look. It's very, very sheer, but it's still moisturizing. I think if you're looking for normal to dry skin, this would be perfect for super sheer coverage. If you had oily skin, I don't actually think you're gonna like any of these three. You might prefer the Jane Airedale, even though it doesn't give that much coverage, or the Trini London. It gives more coverage, but it's really not as moisturizing as these other three are. And once again, at my number one favorite is the drugstore pick, the Morphe 2 Hint Hint Skin Tint. I love this product. It lasts really well, it's moisturizing, it looks beautiful on the skin, but it allows my skin to show through, which is my preferred coverage. I would say this gets the number one pick of actually any complexion product that I've tried in 2023 so far. Highly impressed with this $18 an ounce product. If you haven't tried it, I definitely recommend you giving it a try. You'll find more shades on the website than you probably will in your local Target. Highly, highly recommend the skin tint. Thanks very much for watching. If you have a favorite skin tint that I didn't share today, definitely leave it in the comments down below. Always like to try products that you guys recommend. Thanks very much for watching and wishing you guys a fantastic day.